Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Monday, December 2nd, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, mainstream media admits Obama is the most hostile president in history towards journalists. Then, is DHS Googling you before you travel? And are you ready for Amazon's drone delivery system? That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. No, only to be shut down under the EU Convention on Spreading Radical. Shut him up! Shut him up! I don't agree with him! He's giving me too many facts! Well, as we pointed out last week, in desperation, many retailers, many big box retailers, were opening on Thanksgiving and not waiting until Black Friday. But as Yahoo reports, despite record crowds, spending has actually declined. They say this is a record number of shoppers, but they spent less for the first time in history. Well, while the stock market is ballooning with infused cash from the Federal Reserve, what this is reflecting is the reality that for the middle class, for the lower income people, we actually see jobs declining. We see things getting much tougher. Everybody knows that. Retailers knew that. That's one of the reasons why they opened up on Thursday. People are suffering because of the employment situation. Companies are afraid to hire new people. They're even converting full-time employees to part-time employees because they're concerned about the rising cost of health care. Well, in a story from Paul Joseph Watson that was picked up by the Drudge Report today, the DHS is Googling travelers before they enter the U.S. We see that 50-year-old Ellen Richardson, a Canadian citizen, was told by a DHS official at Toronto's Pearson Airport that she would be refused entry because, quote, I had a hospitalization in the summer of 2012 for clinical depression. They said she'd be required to undergo medical evaluation by DHS-approved doctors before being accepted in the United States. And, of course, some Canadian MPs got involved in that and looked to see if this is happening elsewhere. They found other cases where this is happening, as well as a lawyer, Barry Swarden, who said many people have had a similar problem. And it appears that the Canadian police are turning their database of medical information over to the FBI. So the problem is, is that the Canadian government has the health care records of all of its citizens. And now you see how medical privacy being lost affects your life in so many areas. It's not just that the website is a failure. It's not just a pragmatic issue of the government not being able to create a functioning website spending half a billion dollars. It's not just that they can't manage anything. It's that they want to micromanage our lives. And they're also paranoid and intrusive in the way that they look at our medical histories. Take a look at what's being used against various families here. Here's a couple of stories that illustrate this. We've got an Ohio Amish girl in a chemo case is now doing well, even though the government was trying to mandate that she take chemotherapy. A relative says that an Ohio Amish girl who was diagnosed with leukemia is continuing her natural treatments while in hiding with her parents because of a legal case over whether she'll be forced to resume chemotherapy. Now, the attorney for the hospital that demanded that she be given chemotherapy said the undisputed testimony was that without treatment, she would die within six months to a year. She was last treated in June. We don't know where she is, what her condition is, or whether she's receiving treatment. Well, we do know where she is, and we do know what her condition is. She's thriving with natural treatment that she had to go out of the country to get. But maybe you don't believe in natural therapy. Maybe you believe that everyone should have chemotherapy. Maybe you think the doctors should be able to override the family's wishes in this. Well, if you accept that principle, this is where it leads. We now see parents receiving threatening letters regarding mandatory medical and dental exams for their children. This is from Police State USA. Now, in this article, we see two letters, one from New York and another one from a Chippewa Indian reservation. Now, the one from New York demands that they take their kids in for a medical exam, for dental exams, and it cites a law. It doesn't tell them that there is a religious exemption. Of course, the religious exemption is going to be very difficult to get. But the letter from the Indian Reservation is much more like what you're going to expect to see when we combine government health care with government schools. Now, what we see on the Indian Reservations is an entire weaponized bureaucracy of Agenda 21 type of policies that they've been using against the Indians for about 150 years. Part of that, a large part of that, was separating the children from the family, from their traditions. And we can now see, when we look at a letter like this, we can see what happens when the government has access to all of your medical records. Listen to this, what they threatened the family with. They said they threatened them with involvement with child protection services. They said, we don't want to have to file a report of medical neglect. But, of course, that's what they're threatening to do. 
We can see how government health care is going to be used to assert government ownership of the children and break down the family. This is how MSNBC put it in a public service announcement. We haven't had a very collective notion of these are our children. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. There you go. The nanny state summed up in about 10 seconds. And the way that can happen is if you don't take your child just for a dental checkup, you can have the school charge you with medical neglect and send child protection services after you. Well, CNN reported on the upgrades to Obamacare's website, his half billion dollar website, but it told us more about CNN than it did about Obamacare. We had first two reporters honestly give us a report yesterday. So tell me about what, what happened because we're getting another error message here and it's supposed to be running smoothly. We're just not seeing that. Yeah, so we've, you know, we've, been, we've been trying to get into this site since October 1st on and off again. I have to say it did work a lot more smoothly this morning. I got through, I picked my state, I put in all my information and I got through the whole process in about eight minutes. And then it said my, progress, or my uh, status was in progress. So I went to refresh it and I got the error message. Okay, so a half a billion dollars spent on this website and then another two months of bug fixes still didn't seem to work. But today is a very different story from CNN. They kind of walked that back. Here's what they said. Two months and more than 400 individual repairs later, the administration announced it met their self-imposed deadline, saying the website's error rate has fallen to well under 1%. Several concerns remain. First of all, when you buy a policy on healthcare.gov, that information has to be relayed to the insurance companies, and that has not gone very smoothly. If your original login isn't working, it's not you. You may indeed have to go in and basically create a whole new account. Did you catch that little caveat there? They said, although the front end may be collecting your information, they're not really sure if it's passing it on correctly. That could be a much bigger problem. As many medical professionals have pointed out, if they're capturing people's information, but then passing it on incorrectly, it's going to create a huge garbled mess with the insurance companies, with the hospitals. And of course, if it doesn't work, it's, it's not you, it's the website, that half a billion dollar website. But Obama has now arbitrarily ignored his own laws because, of course, he's the dictator in chief. Here's some of the changes that have been made to the Affordable Health Care Act, according to WebMD. They're reporting that because of all the glitches, that the federal government is giving consumers more time to buy coverage that will begin on January the 1st, 2014. People can now buy coverage as late as December the 23rd, give you a whole extra week, even though they took two months to fix their website. But that's not the real deadline now, because it also says further down the same article that people can now buy coverage all the way through the last day of open enrollment on March 31st, 2014, without facing penalties. So I guess that's the real deadline. We don't want to lose track of the fact that the feds can't get a website functioning besides spending this kind of money, but it's really not simply about the efficiency, about the pragmatism. We've got to realize that the real issues here are that people can't get health care that they want. Their choice is being taken away. And millions of people are losing health care coverage and they're losing their affordability. Of course, they called it the Affordable Health Care Act. That's the one change they haven't made is to make it affordable. When people are spending up to five times as much for their health insurance, they're not going to be going out and shopping on Black Friday. There we go, right back to where we started. That's one of the major things dragging this economy down is Obamacare and the threat of Obamacare, the economic cost of Obamacare, besides the civil liberties issues. But CNN did a real nice job covering for the Obama administration. And as a result, we see that their ratings are falling like a rock. MSNBC took a more careful look at the Obama administration. We're gonna have that right after the break, so stay tuned. Well, while CNN does its best to propagandize for Obamacare, people are seeing that it's propaganda, and CNN's ratings are falling like a rock. Now, Bob Franken used to work for CNN. He now works for MSNBC, and he had this frank assessment of what's going on. This is the most hostile to the media that uh, has been in United States history. I won't stop fighting to open up government. We have put in place the toughest ethics laws and toughest transparency rules of any administration in history. In history. You would go that far? I would go that far. The most far. hostile in history. The most hostile because, first of all, we have the situation where they are, in fact, shutting out the press. But the reason I say most hostile is because of the, the Justice Department moves that they've made against the press. They're, obviously, they have a contempt for the journalistic process. 
Well, I would agree with Bob Franken's assessment. It's pretty clear that Obama is not transparent. Only his lies are transparent. And as Franken pointed out, he's very hostile to the entire journalistic process. The way they control that is through access. MSNBC was discussing complaints from photojournalists that the Obama administration is not allowing media photographers to take their own shots while pushing photos from White House approved photographers. Franken told his panelists, let's use the P word here. It's propaganda. Absolutely hostile. The, he points out that the Justice Department is hostile to the press. They have nothing but contempt for the journalistic process. They have nothing but contempt for journalists. It's a very frightening thing to see this war on journalism, to see people like Feinstein saying that they need to determine who are bona fide press. And of course, free speech rights will be stripped from anybody that doesn't play games with them, that doesn't say what they want to say, it doesn't follow their line of propaganda you lose access. And then it gets even worse. You lose the ability to speak freely. Well, we'll be right back after the break. We've got some interesting news about Amazon.com. Maybe we should start calling it Amadrone.com. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. <laughs> 